Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do a chest tube. And before we start, uh, we position the patient on the back. The device that we need and connect the chest tube, like after placement of the chest tube, um, should be ready and prepared. Furthermore, we need a, uh, I always use a medicine bomb scissor. You need um, a chest tube. It's always better at the beginning when you have like two different sizes of chest tubes. We need something to lock the chest tube and something to suture it and a scalpel for the uh, skin incision. And there are basically two types of um, chest tube placements. The first one is, according to Monaldi, where you use the mid-clavicle line and you go in the second or third um, space between the ribs, especially when you, when you want to do a decompression of a, a tension pneumothorax. But that is actually not a place where you put in a permanently or temporary uh, chest tube. That is um, where you use the technique according to Bulow, and therefore you go in the anterior axillary line and you have the mammillar as, let's say, as a barrier, as a border, never go below the mammillar line because the diaphragm is curved and it's very easy to get in the abdomen and uh, potentially injure the liver or the spleen. So always stay above the Memula and um, as as guidance, you use the anterior axillary line, and then you count, beginning from the clavicle, the fourth or fifth space between the ribs, and that is your entry point. And I'm going to start with that now. It's always a common mistake, especially in the beginning, um, that you do the skin incision too small. So the skin incision should be as small as possible, but as big as necessary. And that means, especially in the beginning, do the skin incision a little bit um, bigger, a little bit larger, because it's easier to put in two fingers and you have to have the space for two fingers because later on when once you are like through the subcutaneous tissue you need one finger still as guidance and the other one is the chest tube and when you have like just a small space it's very very difficult and takes even more time when the patient is awake and not on anesthesia sure you need some kind of local anesthesia which you apply first here in that section and now I would start to do here in the fourth um, space between the ribs, do a skin incision. I will do it on purpose a little bit larger than usual. So that's the place where you are. Here you see the subcutaneous tissue. What I do sometimes, I use a medicine bone, but just the tip of it because it's very easy and that is like the worst case scenario to go like with a sharp device like the trocar of a chest tube or like with your the tip of your scissors to go in the chest cavity and you can really um, hurt the liver at the lung or the heart and that shouldn't happen so it's always I use my fingers so and especially for the subcutaneous tissue and once I'm there there's like a a, a tissue layer above the ribs and I can use like the uh, medicine bomb just to slightly cut through that and really make sure I'm still out of the cavity, expand that hole. And here you already see the muscles. And then I use again like the tip, it just as a first entry point. And everything I do, I do it with my fingers just to make sure that I'm not gonna potentially injure some crucial parts. And once I'm in between the ribs, you feel a layer like, and when you go through that, you're already in the chest cavity. And usually when the patient is breathing and the patient is on the ICU, you really feel the lung coming always like to the tip of your finger. And that's why I never go in the chest cavity with your scissor. And then a common mistake is that you don't have enough space in between the ribs, so the hole is not big enough to put the chest tube in there conveniently. And the second mistake is you put in the chest tube with the trocar. So I know some guys use the trocar, like let's say as a joystick, which is okay, but it's very easy once you slip away and you like just like pull the 
uh, push the trocar, and you're gonna hurt the, the lung. So that's why I always take the trocar off. I don't need it. Yeah, my hole is a little bit bigger, but I make sure I'm not gonna injure the lung. So once I have the hole, I always recommend to do a, like with your finger a 360 degree circle just to make sure you're not in the abdominal cavity, you're in your chest tube, you feel the lung coming to the tip of your finger and then you, you put the uh, chest tube depending on what you have, what kind of a theology. When you have a patient with uh, Pumo, you want the um, chest tube to be anterior because according to the gravity errors uh, coming up and when you have patients with blood or uh, pleural effusion, you want the chest tube to be on the back side because that's where the blood and the air is. Let's, let's say, okay, we want, want the chest tube to be back and I really use my finger like as a guidance to put the chest tube exactly at, to the space where I want it to be, like behind the lung. And then you put the chest tube in and now it is time and usually when you put the chest tube in and there's a lot of blood or a lot of fluid that started to come out and so you need this to just like lock the uh, chest tube and now the first thing you, you do when the chest tube is in make definitely sure even if you need a second person that this is not moving that you don't lose your position. So that's very important. And now the first thing you do is you want to make sure that the chest tube is fixed, is locked. Yeah. So what I always do is I use the first suture to like make the hole a little bit smaller and also fix the chest tube. That is like the most important part now. and really make sure that the chest tube is fixed. And when something like this happens, you have to use a new suture. But as you see, the chest tube is moving, so you have to really make sure that this is not happening. and never suture down on the skin, so because like that makes pressure ulcera. So you do something like an air node, that you have like a little bit space to the skin. So now we have fixed the chest tube and now it is important to prepare a suture for the moment when you, when you don't need the chest tube anymore. So like let's say in two or three days all the blood is gone, all the pleural effusion is gone, you want to pull the chest tube out. But like in that moment when you don't prepare it, you have to do a new suture, which is very inconvenient and painful for the patient. And in this, in this situation, the patient already has like local anesthesia or pain medication or is on anesthesia. And that's why what I do is in that moment, like in that moment when I put in the chest tube, I already prepare the moment when you pull out the chest tube by doing such a suture like a U-stitch like this you take the needle off and I just like take the sutures and like wrap it around the chest tube fix it with a tape because like two or three days later, you just take the tape off, you have this suture, one is pulling out the chest tube and the other one is just like, fix, uh, like noting down the suture which, which was already prepared.
Yeah? And then after that, very important, use your device, you need to suck out all the blood. And after that, you definitely need an X-ray to make sure that the chest tube is in a, in a correct position. That's it.